I'm Edie Lush here in the Hub Culture Studio. Really delighted to be here with Hugh Van Stienis, Senior Advisor to the Governor of the Bank of England. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for having me, Edie. So I'm excited to talk to you about the moves in sustainable investing, which is something that I know that you've been looking at. Give me the good news, first of all. Well, look, sustainable investing has really been on a roll. So probably now one in four dollars in the system are managed to some sort of criteria around sustainability. And probably even more interesting, um, six out of ten asset managers changed their criteria to be more focused on sustainable investing in the last 12 months. So there's a weight of interest and people are trying to put money to work. Um, and I think that's, that's great in terms of what it means for society. Okay, and then what's the bad news? Well, the challenge is, is how do you actually put that into practice? And for me, there's one big problem, that's the data. Uh, the data is not of high enough quality to be really comparable to know, is this company better than that company? Mm -hmm. And on what different measures? You know, there are many standards. There's something like 230 different standards that companies can report to. But it's a bit of an alphabet soup. Mm -hmm. And certainly some of the investors and CEOs I talk to, and I was on a panel here uh, yesterday, say it's just there's too, it's too confusing. Fewer high quality standards would really help us uh, make a difference. And this isn't just private sector. I was also talking to the World Bank and IFC. Mm -hmm. They also want to know that the money they're putting to work has a real impact. Mm. And so they also are looking to have better data through to the end project to measure what they're doing. So this is fascinating. You see 230 different ways to measure impact? Well, this isn't just impact. So this is across environment, uh, uh, you know, uh, sustainable factors and sort of governance. And mm -hmm. so some of this is basic data, mm -hmm. but let's take something like climate change. Mm -hmm. How do you measure the Im so potential right. impact? Well, A, it's probably a scenario, mm -hmm. uh, but do you just look at the really bad stuff or mm -hmm. the bad stuff and not so bad stuff? So uh, the good news is uh, Bloomberg working with the Financial Services Board have come up with a potential standard mm -hmm. um, and 500 companies have already signed up to it. Okay. But it's going to take some time to really embed that into company reports. So one of the things I'm arguing for this week mm -hmm. is let's try and work with accountants, mm -hmm. with companies and with investors to get this data into financial accounting. Okay, so this is about ESG investing in general. Yes. What about investing um, with the goal being 2030 and the sustainable development goals, which is aligned with ESG investing, but in fact, even broader in a way? Yeah, so I, I always think of sustainable as that it's trying to do good, but it's also trying to risk manage the way they make money. So they don't want to have a blow up. Whereas I think impact investing, mm. actually sometimes you're prepared to make low returns because you want to have that impact. Mm -hmm. um, so the... Uh, there's, there's a, an estimate of somewhere between a five and seven trillion dollar gap mm. to have that impact. Yeah. Now that sounds like a weighty big number. And, the, and, and many people have suggested that that needs to come from the private sector. Well, I think some of that will have to come from mm. the private sector, but some from the public sector too. But given there's over 200 trillion of financial assets, mm. I think in perspective it is doable, but we need to make sure the advocacy and really nudging folk is gonna be very important. Okay, so these things always reach a kind of tipping point. And one of the things that I hear from impact investors that I speak to is they say, listen, you go, of course you can have profit, profit alongside purpose. And we do know that there are various um, high net worth funds out there who are doing it. We know that UBS is putting money into it, various U.S. investors. Uh, but I'd love you to tell me what you think it's going to take for, it to, for that part kind of investing to, to be accepted almost as much as ESG is. Um, well, I, th I think first is probably an acceptance that virtue does have a price. And therefore, if you want to have that impact, you do need to recognize it might, uh, there is a potential cost yourself. But I think if you're a, a family office thinking in between generations, that's doable. If you're a very large corporate thinking about the next 20, 30 years, that should be doable. So we probably need to really, the tipping point is going to come from these large pools of assets. And I think better data is going to be, and, and the ability to measure impact actually is going to be a key uh, enabler of this change. Can I get you to predict when we might see um, the, the better data coming through? Well, I, look, I, there's a lot of good work to build upon. And it, it, my, my view is almost this is like a sieve. We need to make sure we have fewer mm -hmm. but better quality data. So that to where I would like to be, which is put in the annual reports, it might take another three to five years. But in terms of trying to shape down a, ne a fewer standards, I think the next two years are really critical. All right, we're going to check back with you, Hugh. Thank you very much, Edie. Thank you very much, and I'm Edie Lush.